Hello and welcome to this lecture in the course for Secure Systems Engineering. Uh, in the previous video lecture, we had actually started uh, about speculative execution and we had looked at uh, this recent attack known as Meltdown. Uh, in this uh, video lecture, we will look at another speculative attack known as Spectre. So, this attack uh, works basically in was this attack was discovered again in uh, Jan. Uh, January to 2018 and also makes use of uh, the speculative et execution of Intel processors. As we seen in the previous video, what speculative execution in a processor does is that uh, certain instructions can be speculatively executed even before uh, prior instructions have uh, actually been completed. So, for example, over here, uh, these set of instructions can be speculatively executed and the results for these instructions will not be committed unless and until this previous result com corresponding to the compare and the jump have completed execution. Only if the speculation is correct would these instructions be committed. So, uh, thus we see that uh, if there is a speculation and the speculation is correct then uh, all of these results can be immediately committed and uh, the performance of the program uh, would increase considerably. On the other hand, if the speculation was wrong, uh, that is there was a branch uh, that occurred over here to uh, this particular address and the instructions that followed uh, follows this label has to be executed, then th all the speculatively executed results needs to be discarded. Now, here there is would be a performance overhead. Uh, processors uh, try their best therefore, to speculatively execute correctly. They would try to predict uh, what could, would possibly be the result of this uh, compare instruction and uh, uh, would try to speculatively execute either this code following the jump on no 0 instruction or uh, the code following the label uh, depending on what they predict would be the result of this jump on no 0 uh, instruction. So, in order to achieve this, um, what is added uh, to the processor is something known as a branch prediction logic. A branch prediction logic would keep track of uh, all the branches that were taken uh, at that particular instruction. So, for example, uh, in this figure, it shows a 2 bit branch predictor and uh, uh, the branch prediction logic would either predict that a branch is taken or not taken uh, based on what had happened uh, previously when that instruction was executed. So, for example, let us say that we start off with the uh, prediction not taken and the first iteration of that loop uh, resulted in the branch being taken. So, then the state of the branch predictor comes from uh, here uh, to from 0 0 uh, to 0 1. Another uh, iteration of the loop, the next iteration of the loop, if again the branch uh, if the branch is taken, then uh, the state of this branch predictor moves to predicted taken and uh, which has a value of 1 1. So, now you see that the third time uh, when that uh, jump on no 0 gets executed, the branch predictor would automatically predict that the branch would be taken. So, thus we see that the uh, branch predictor is learning based on uh, prior branches and trying to predict uh, the result of a particular branch, whether the branch would be taken or the branch would not be taken. The speculative execution that follows would hopefully have a better accuracy and therefore would boost the performance. So, what was shown in the spectre attack was that these branch prediction plus the speculation could result in a vulnerability by which secret data present in a program uh, can be read. In order to understand the spectre attack, uh, let us take this small uh, snippet of code. Uh, this code comprises of an if statement where uh, the value of x is uh, checked with uh, array len and uh, if the value of x is less than array len then we are permitting access uh, to this array uh, at the index x and uh, the value of that array is taken into i and then we are also accessing a second array array 2 at the location i into 256 
and the result is stored in uh, this variable called y. So, uh, what we see over here is that the uh, array 2 is accessed at a location which is specified uh, by array of x. Now, um, what we look at next is the user space part of the process. Now, we will assume that uh, there is a secret information that is present here and the attacker wants to read some parts of this uh, secret data. Uh, the other components of uh, this small uh, snippet of code say the x array and array 2 are also shown in uh, this user space part of the process. So, you have array over here x array 2 and also array len. Uh, for simplicity we have actually ignored the value of i and uh, we assume that uh, uh, i is also present somewhere in this uh, user space part of the process or you can also assume that i is going to be part uh, that i and y are just going to be stored in registers. So, let us see how uh, execution of this small snippet of code uh, takes place in normal circumstances. So, the first thing that is done is that when this line gets executed, we have two load instructions. One is the load uh, for this variable x and the load for this variable array underscore len. So, these two loads would cause x and array len to be loaded into registers and during that particular process, it would also get load, loaded into the cache memory. Now, uh, what we showed here is that there is a comparison between x and the array len. Now, if x is indeed lesser than the array len which we assume is true right now, uh, then uh, the if condition is entered and these two instructions are executed. And uh, let us assume this is the case right now. The next we see is that the if statement is entered and x is used to index into the array and cause one block of data corresponding to array of x to be loaded into cache. So, this data you can assume is loaded into cache and into a register which we denote as i. Next what we see is that this value uh, i is then used to index into array 2. So in other words, we have uh, this value i which is uh, present in the cache or and the register is used into uh, used to index into array 2 and cause one block of data present in array 2 to be loaded into the cache memory. Typically, if x is less than array len, then uh, what we achieve at the end of uh, this execution is that we have the array len present uh, in the cache memory. Similarly, we have x present in the cache memory and two blocks of data, one corresponding to i uh, in the cache and the other corresponding to y. So, all of these data would be present in the cache. Now, this is under the normal uh, behavior when x is indeed uh, less than array len. So, note that these kind of checks uh, is quite common in uh, a lot of programs to ensure that uh, an array is always indexed at a location which is within its uh, bounds. Now, consider the case that uh, this small snippet of code is in a loop and uh, uh, we are calling this small snippet of code multiple times. So, uh, as a result we know that since there is a if over here and therefore, there is a branch instruction. Uh, this repeated invocation of uh, uh, these three statements would actually tune the branch predictor to predict that the branch is not taken. So, if we consider what the branch predictor would do is that uh, repeated invocation of these if statements and uh, with the condition that x is less than array len would eventually move the bra branch predictor to this particular state where the branch is considered to be not taken. Therefore, from a speculative execution what can happen is that uh, these instructions uh, i equal to array of x and y equal to array 2 at uh, index of i into 256. So, these two statements can be speculatively executed by the processor. Now, consider the, uh, this particular case. Now, we would assume uh, the case where x has already been loaded into the cache and we have the secret data already present in the cache, but uh, the array len is not present in the cache. Now, 
consider again the uh, execution of uh, these statements, but consider the case that uh, we have x is greater than array length. So, uh, typically in um, uh, what should happen over here is that uh, since x is greater than or equal to array length, uh, these statements uh, inside the if should not be executed. So, typically uh, since x is greater than uh, array length, these statements inside this uh, if condition should not be executed. Okay, so, let us see uh, when uh, such a scenario occurs, uh, how this program behaves. Now, since we are assuming that array len is not present in the cache, uh, we also are assuming that the branch predictor it has learnt and is in the state where prediction is not taken. So, therefore, uh, what would happen is that even though x is greater than array len, these instructions within the if would be speculatively executed. So, first we would see that uh, since array len is not in the cache, uh, it would cause some cache miss which would take considerable amount of time and uh, cause array len to be loaded from the main memory uh, and to the cache memory. On the other hand, the other components uh, x is present in the cache and uh, we fill the value of x with some location comprising of the secret. So, since the secret is present in the cache, uh, the index array of x uh, i equal to array of x can be very quickly evaluated and uh, similarly we would what we would have is that some location in the cache would contain uh, the value of array of x. Next what we are doing is we are using this particular value which is essentially a secret value to index into uh, this array 2 and load the contents of the array 2 uh, into the cache memory. Now, uh, while this process uh, process is going on, we are assuming that uh, array len has after a while has finally reached the cache memory and now since x and array len have finally uh, arrived, uh, this check corresponding to this particular statement can finally be invoked, but the processor would have will now observe that x is greater than array len and therefore, all the speculative execution that has been done should be discarded and therefore, the processor would discard. Uh, these speculatively executed instructions due to the misprediction that had occurred. However, what we observe is that there is some component of array 2 that is uh, present in the cache. Now, we note that this component depends on the value of uh, array of x and what we have seen is that we have given a sufficiently large value of array x, so that it was actually causing a buffer overflow and uh, pointing inside the secret. In other words, uh, what has been loaded into uh, the cache at this location is essentially a function of the secret location. The next thing to do for the attacker is to identify which block in array 2 has actually been loaded into the cache. What he does for this is that he uh, starts to access every element in array 2. So, he accesses uh, the first element and he figures out that uh, this access is going to take a long time because uh, the first element is not present in the cache. Then he would uh, try the second element, uh, again he would get a cache miss and therefore, a long uh, a longer execution time and this continues uh, over and over again until he finds out that one particular element is taking a shorter time. So, this shorter time is due to the fact that uh, this element is present in the cache and notice that this element is in the cache due to the secret uh, information which has invoked it speculatively and thus the attacker would get some information about the contents of this secret. Thank you.